Talk Show. Recorded live. My name is Jesse Vassell. I'm here with a guest from Grand Design Exposed, Walt Stickle. My YouTube channel is by the same name, Jesse Vassell. Um, and um, I basically titled this impromptu broadcast as the United States of Sodom, uh, 501c3, and uh, um, Rome's homosexual agenda. Um, there's a, there's quite a bit of stuff I want to get to. If I can't get through all of the uh, information that I have pro- provided here this evening, then we'll have to probably do a part two of this, you know, the following weekend or or what have you. Um, so if you want to um, say anything, Walt, you know, before we officially get started, um, feel free. Oh, no, I'm just uh, I'm ready ready to go and uh, looking forward to the discussion on on tonight's topic. Okay. All right. So before we get into the uh, the recent event that took place on June 26th, 2015, which actually is a very unique date because that was also the same year that the United Nations was found. You know, the same date, June 26th, 1948, and in, in the year 2000, June 26, the United Religions um, Initiative was founded. Um, but um, as I'm starting to do with all broadcasts, I want to read for, real quickly the gospel delivered by Henry Gretton Guinness out of his book, Romanism and the Reformation, because I think that is important um, before we discuss any kind of prophetic significances of any current events, because Jesus Christ is at the center and he is on the throne and he is in control. So, remember that there is only one mediator between God and man, that there is but one sacrifice for sins, offered once for all and forever. Through the one mediator, by the one sacrifice, draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. You need no mediator between yourself and Christ. 1 Timothy 2.5, For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. The priest is a false intruder there, Jesus calls you to come to himself. He is both human and divine. He is bone of your bone and flesh of your flesh, yet without sin. God is in him. He is one of with us and one with God. Suffer nothing to come between your soul and him. Suffer no saint, no angel, no virgin, no priest to come between you and Jesus Christ. Go to him for the pardon of all your sins. Make to him your confessions. He can absolve you and will. Yea, he does. If you truly believe in him, priestly absolution is a lie. It is a blasphemous pretense. The sentence, I absolve thee, whether from the mouth of Romish priests or Protestant ministers, is profane. Be not deluded by it. Your fellow sinner cannot absolve you from the sins you have committed against God. Turn from these idols and vanities. Jesus is all you need. His blood is sufficient to atone and cleanses those who simply trust in him from all sin. Search the scriptures, they testify of him. Come to him that you may have life. His heart is touched with the feeling of our infirmities. None can sympathize as he can. None can help as he. To you, to each one, he says, Him that cometh unto me, I will in no wise cast out. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. Thou alone art all we need, for thou art alone art all in all. John 5.39, search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. That is the uh, gospel presented as uh, Henry Grant McGinnis presented it when he did his lectures and put them in a book on uh, uh, it's entitled Romanism and the Reformation. And I think that's very important uh, to note because even though we have a lot of, uh, we've had the Supreme Court ruling that uh, rule in favor of the politically correct term of homosexual marriage, okay? And the ruling was five to four um, via the Supreme Court. And uh, what is very <clears throat> unique about that is out of the five people that did vote yay on this, um, three of them, <laughs> um, and you made mention of this on a, uh, you know, on, on a conversation we had, Walt, that three of them were in fact 
uh, members of the Judaic religion. So they were so-called Jews. And only two of them that voted, that voted in favor were Catholics. So it's kind of neat how they're kind of spinning that. I, I, I'd like to make a point. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, you know, when you uh, called me the other day and we uh, we realized it passed, and I asked you at, at the vote, and it was 5-4. Mm-hmm. If you remember, we between you and I, we figured out who, who voted for what before I got the vote, before I got who actually voted. Yeah. In other words, when we were talking, I said, it's going to be all three women are going to vote for it. And, uh, uh, and then the Jewish man, that makes four. And we were undecided who was going to cast the deciding vote. But it was uh, Kennedy, I forget his first name, uh, and he's a Catholic. So okay. two, it was two Catholics and three Jews that voted for it. So, and as we commented that night, it's always, it, you know, when, somebody, when it gets in some circles now, they can blame it on the Jews, see? Mm-hmm. You know, but, uh, but it's uh, very evident uh, who is behind uh, this agenda. And it's not the Jews; it's Rome. Right, right, exactly. Yeah. You know, and that uh, you know, because a lot of people will point the finger at the, uh, you know, at the Jews, Judaism, or what have you. You know, Judaism actually follows in lockstep with the Vatican. They actually follow them; they follow their lead. And obviously, this is kind of a key point that Kennedy did do the did make the deciding vote, and that you know he himself is Roman Catholic. So I think that is, you know, that is actually. His, his name is Anthony Kennedy. Yeah. Anthony Kennedy. Okay. Yes. So um, I want to go ahead, and what I do plan on covering is I got a, uh, I do have a, uh, uh, an article from um, remnantofgod.org, um, which is about the 501c3. Because there were some very interesting arguments that came from the uh, pastors and the churches and these types of things, and you know, and and they're adamant about it. This was out of the World Net Daily that, um, you know, for example, I'm just going to read this uh, this whole thing here, um, part of it, like uh, this paragraph here from World Net Daily. It says, quote, dozens of Christian leaders such as Franklin Graham, James Dobson, and John Hagee had already signed a petition before the ruling assuring the Supreme Court that they would defy any decision that came down redefining the 6,000-year-old de- definition of marriage. A totally unbelievable decision, yet totally believable for our society as we are definitely in the swirly mode headed down the toilet, said Pastor Mark Biltz author of Blood Moons, Decoding the Imminent Heavenly Signs. The Bible says, as it was in the days of Lot, so it will it, so will it be when the Messiah comes. The sewer floodgates are opening for all filth to come pouring in. Um, and I, 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 mean, I mean, I agree with what he said in that last sentence. I mean, I understand that. But what's really unique is all of these pastors, all of these uh, denominations, all of these churches have signed an agreement with the government uh, for tax exemption status um, under the code 501c3. And long story short, with that 501c3 basically is that they are basically given their um, allegiance to the government, basically stating that the government is their creator, so therefore, so therefore um, <clears throat> Anything politically incorrect that comes through these tur- th- th- these churches, the government has a right to um, say, no, you cannot preach on this, you cannot preach on this, you may preach on this, this, and that, and the other. And it is very unique because with what Obama said in his speech was very crafty. It was a very crafty little speech. I'm just going to read a portion of it. Um, and then you can chime in after this portion of the speech, if uh, you, you deem fit. 
Uh, Obama said, quote, opposition in some cases has been based on sincere and deeply held beliefs, he said. All of us who welcome today's news should be mindful of that fact, recognize different viewpoints, revere our deep commitment to religious freedom. But today should also give us hope that on the many issues with which we grapple often painfully, real change is possible. He continued abruptly switching gears, clearly implying that those who disagree must come around to the more righteous, more American, and more equal view of marriage. And this is what he said. This is very tricky the way he put this. Quote, shifts in hearts and minds is possible, he said. And those who have come so far on their journey to equality have a responsibility to reach back and help others join them. Because for all our differences, we are one people, stronger together than we could ever be alone. End quote. Okay. Well, um, see, the question that you that really needs to be brought up here is um, excuse excuse me. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. I, I, I was I was muted. See, so listen. What I wanted to bring up is, um, and I think you've heard that they lit the White House up with with the rainbow colors. Yes. Could you could you could you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. I mean, no, yeah. You, um, not only the White House, but uh, there was also other. Um, there was also a lot of other. Um, <sighs> buildings throughout the nation, um, uh, like in Wall Street. There was a couple buildings there that they decided to light up in the rainbow colors, and this was done the exact evening of this, of this uh, Supreme Court ruling. And it is the rainbow colors, <laughs> the colors of the rainbow, and they use that those colors to signify pride. And, you know, a lot of people like say gay pride this, gay pride this, but the key word there is pride. And um, there's a nice passage in the Bible that says pride comes before a fall and Holy Spirit before destruction. Pride is a very dangerous, dangerous thing to get yourself involved in um, because pride leads to all kinds of sins. Pride leads to idolatry. It leads to lust, which is what we see going on here. It, um, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. Um, and, you know, and this really is a, what this to me signifies is that, you know, the United States government, the image of the beast, the United States government, um, is basically openly pointing the finger and defying God just, you know, by taking the rainbow, which was signified that, uh, that God would never destroy the earth with a flood again. That was a promise. And by changing it into a prideful thing, such as gay pride or pride in and of itself. Um, and they decided to go ahead and light a whole bunch of monuments under uh, the rainbow colors of this gay pride. Right. <laughs> And um, and so that's basically how I uh, see what is going on as far as the colors and the lighting up and, you know, the lighting of the, of the White House and, you know, certain key buildings in Wall Street and, and these types of things. And, you know, and, and, and really when it comes down to it, folks, you know, a lot of people are talking about you know the this this gay agenda. You know the, this this whole the, you know sodomy and these types of things. And really, what you have to go and look at is you have to look at is this the cause of something, or is this the root? Is sodomy the root of all the problems, or is there something that has caused this to transpire? And what I want to bring out is Exodus 20. 4 through 6, it is the second commandment, and this is very unique because Rome, in their Catholic catechism, they have decided to remove this second commandment, and all the churches are 
following lockstep with this by having so many different kinds of relics and statues and stained glass windows and what this is is graven images and idols. So I want to read the second commandment as stated in the King James Bible, Exodus 20, verse 4 through 6. And it says, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. This commandment regarding graving images of anything that is in heaven above or the earth beneath has been completely removed by Roman Catholicism. And, and, and keep my commandments. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And so what happened is they moved every single commandment up one, and they took the tenth one, split it in two, to make ten. So, and what's very unique is when God said in, in the middle of this commandment that he visits the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of the, them that hate me, you have to ask yourself, is sodomy the, the root of this problem or is being yoked up with graven images surrounded all around you in these churches and in these types of things, is this the root? And is sodomy a cause of that root? Say, Jesse? Yes. You know, wouldn't it be kind of appropriate to, to mention, to read page 50 of the Vatican Jesuit Global Conspiracy and what Ronald Cook says about idolatry? Yes. I was, I was, I was just going get, to get to that right now. Um, it's kind of funny because as I started this broadcast, my, my light bulb in my room went out. So here I am <laughs> trying to use the computer light to read. Uh, <laughs> um, and uh, so, you, you um, want me to read that first paragraph, and you can read the second. Uh, yes, yes, if you would. Yeah. Okay. This 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 book comes out of. A, you can get this page, this book up on Grand Design Exposed on my download page, and it's called the Vatican Jesuit Global Conspiracy. Uh, by Dr. Ronald Cook, who, who wrote this in 1985. But uh, this this is a very profound statement here that he makes on page 50 in, this cha- in the chapter is, is, is concluding remarks in this book. But let me read it. The complete ignorance and apathy of most American pr- protestants to the Vatican designs on America is, to say the least, disturbing. Not only that, but even those who are supposed to be informed and even write books to warn Americans about the dangers which this nation faces never, ever mention Romanism, much less examines it, examine its goals for America. We hear much about perversion today, and I might add, when I read this next paragraph that we keep in mind what has just transpired in America. We hear much about perversion today and of how America will go down the tubes if the gays have their way. But no one ever mentions doctrinal perversion. Doctrinal perversion is always the forerunner of sexual perversion. The scriptures are clear at this point. Even as they did not like to retain God and their knowledge, God gave them up over unto a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. The scriptures teach clearly the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against those who hold back the truth and unrighteousness. Doctrinal perversion leads to idolatry, which leads to sexual perversion, according to Romans chapter 1. And you can look into Romans chapter 1 and read Romans chapter 1, and it is 
explaining exactly what is going on with the passing and legalizing sodomite, sodomy in America. It's kind of hard to believe this, you know. Yes. I actually have uh, Romans 1 right in front of me, too. You want you want to read the, read that about the reprobate mind well, again? I mean, it's it's yes. it's right. It, yes. Uh, yes. So clearly, as Ronald Cook stated in this book, Romans one is is very telling as to what uh, what is going on here and what is going on with this ruling. And as Walt mentioned, this book was written in 1985, folks. You know, so. You know, so obviously this was something that's been going on for a long time, and you know, I mean, as as some, you know, as as you as as a seed is planted, that that seed is only going to manifest, and when that seed manifests to its full growth, you know, it it can either be a very good thing or it can be a very evil thing. And um, and I want to read Romans one. I'm going to start in verse 18, and I'm go to and I'm going to go to verse 32. And you're going to see how this uh, transformation of you know idolatry um, and these types of things just ends up escalating into more perverse ideals and personalities, basically. Uh, Romans one eighteen through thirty. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. You can kind of read that verse a little bit and think of the churches today. Okay, professing Carbon themselves copy. to be, yeah. yeah, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, crucifix, Mary, and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie, and here we go, and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. And see, basically, what has gone on in the past, oh, I'm going to be somewhat nice about it. It's been going on a lot longer than this, but let's just... Let's just go back as far back as the 19th century when certain doctrines came up. And I'm talking about the doctrines of um, futurism, which began in the 16th century, but it really took root in the 19th century through the rapture and, you know, a false notion of the 70th week of Daniel being thrown into the future and this, you know, a one-man antichrist that is going to... Sign a peace treaty with Israel for seven years, <laughs> you know, and you know, and these types of things. And, and what has happened was they changed the truth of God into a lie, and they worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator. When you think about the rapture, who who benefits from that? Is that man? Because you know, with the rapture, <laughs> with a pre-tribulation rapture or a secret rapture. People that benefit from that are are benefiting because, hey, they get to escape the evils of this world and get to have a big old party in heaven while everything is running amok and going to chaos. Okay, so if God, so God basically said, okay, you're going to change the truth of God into a lie. You're going to turn me into a thing like made unto creeping things and, you know, and, and idols and crosses and these types of things, well, if you're going to reduce me to piles of wood and rubbish, then I'm going to reduce you to piles of wood and rubbish. Okay? And this is exactly what verse 26 starts to explain. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature, 
and likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burn in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. And that word meet there is another word for the phrase being which was fit. Okay. Verse 28, And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to, those, to do those things which are not convenient. Being filled with all, so is, this, so is sodomy the only problem? Let's read it. With all unrighteousness, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, there's pride, inventions, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who, knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. And we can see the pleasure that is being thrown out there with this whole agenda. And, and notice it says in the Bible, it says that God give them over to a reprobate mind. Exactly. You know, you know, I mean, they get their own uh, recompense right there. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's so clear and it's, it's amazing that as we read this, this, uh, you know, I mean, you, you last week uh, were thinking of, of, uh, of this discussion and in and here in this last week, we've had a fast track where they passed the TPP plus they've pa they've legalized sodomy and I think it's I always have to check myself anymore, but we use we need to call it for what it is. Uh, we've learned certain words and there's imprints like the word Protestant. It should be Protestant. And it's and it's right. you know it's it's this it, you know it's the same with homosexuality. That is a a word they have they have softened the word up. It's sodomy, and God makes it very clear what He did to sodomy and Sodom and Gomorrah. It's very plain what God thinks of this, and Romans one makes it very clear. You know, so and and then we have we're living in a nation with, you know, supposedly nine, like you might call it, this kind of an oxymoron, this Judo Christianity, because in this apostate state that we're in, those six out of those nine are 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 masquerading as a Christian. It shows you the true color of Rome. Rome is, 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 is the, and in this next, this next uh, paragraph brings this out, in that last two paragraphs in this page 50. It says, when, when the Pope of Rome preaches the perverted doctrines of Romanism, enforced celibacy, purgatory, he is as much a threat to a, to a pure American as any sexual pervert who clamors over gay rights. This is the truth that we must see today, our perish as a nation. Impure doctrines of demons affect a society more than the impure actions of some of its members. The nature of our battle is spiritual. When the biblical truths of the word of God with which evil is defeated or replaced by the satanic drivel of false religion, that society which experiences the barrage of satanic drivel is every much as bad off as any secular humanist society. Secular humanism is not the only evil facing North America. In fact, North America has far more to fear 
from religious idolatry than it has from secular humanism. And that's what sodomy is. Sodomy mm-hmm. is idolatry. And the more, the more Roman we get, the more, the more idolatry we're going to have in this country. I mean, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, there's, a, there's a correlation between the two. The more idolatry you have, the more sodomy you're going to have. Yeah, they all go hand in hand. They go hand in hand, yes. And uh, you know, and it's just uh it's just as remarkable when you look at uh when you look at uh, Luke seventeen and uh and you can really see what is going on here. Um but what a lot of what many people fail to notice is you know, words, little tiny words are important, and this is why the King James Version of the Bible is very important, because um, words are so important. Even a two-letter word, you know, can be changed, and it just totally explains away the the actual meaning of this, uh, you know, of a passage, even a punctuation mark. And this is the case in Luke 17, you know, I mean, I hear, you know, I hear a lot of this phrase, pay attention to detail, and I, I believe that wholeheartedly, that when you read the scriptures, you can't just read it like any other book. You have to really look at it and really look at the punctuations and, you know, the wordings. And if you have, an, you know, another Bible besides the King James, you know, just look at the differences, and then, you, and then you're going to see. But um, in Luke 17, 26 through 29, is very profound, okay, that, you know, uh, um, and it states, and as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. Now, after what just transpired here in America, I think we became, you know, the, uh, the 23rd country, I guess, I mean, I'm pretty sure it might be more, but um, the 23rd country that legalized uh, sodomite marriage. Um, but I'm pretty sure, you know, since America is that beast out of the earth, the United States government is that beast out of the earth in Revelation 13, um, I'm pretty sure that there's going to be a lot more nations to follow this lead. Verse 27. I, I w- uh, I'd just make another comment there, uh, Jesse. Also, the King James Bible is the only Bible that's not copyrighted. Right. And also, I, I've heard, you know, I, I don't like to get into this very, because it's not up for, it's really not up for debate. But Rupert Murdoch, I know, controls the NIV, and I think more than one Bible. All of these Bible perversions come from the Jesuits. Mm-hmm. And, what's, and what's between some, to give you an example, if you look up at Second Thessalonians and you read Second Thessalonians in the King James Bible, you know, it describes the, the man of sin, the son of perdition. If you read the NIV, it's futurism. He puts he puts the man of sin that the NIV does the man of sin and the son of perdition out in the future. Don't let anybody kid you about about these perversions. There's thirty and forty thousand. There there's a diff, there's thir, between thirty and forty thousand uh, differences between these different perversions and things that are different are not the same. And I want to make one other example that I witnessed myself. I was in Salem, Oregon years ago. This is years ago. And I went into a secular bookstore, Christian bookstore, and the King James Bible was not on the shelf. 
Um, you know, and, and 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 if you're really, if you really are, I mean, if you're a doubting Thomas, just think about it. The only Bible that is not copyrighted is the King James Bible. Two and two is four. Mm -hmm. Black is black. White is white. And these Bible perversions are Jesuit Bibles. And if somebody is quoting them, that's their... I, I'm not going to, it's not, it's, I'll tell you this about the Bible, the Bible, these Bible perversions. I compare it to my, <clears throat> my faith is not up for debate. And when it comes to the, to the point like abortion, it's not even debatable. It's not even if we have to if we have to differ in anything. It's just not up for debate. Now, Christ, now evolution and creation. They started that debate between creation and evolution, and they've pressed it into every university and every university in 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 the world. And the first thing they do with evolution creation is to attack your faith. But as we understand these perversions, we understand these dialectics that they put in front of us. It's not up for debate. I've heard some things this last week said about the King James Bible. And I hear one of them. I'll just, it is one of them is that King James was a sodomite. That is the biggest piece of perversion, and people believe it. There wasn't a thing said about King James I until 25 years after his death. Nobody called King James I a sodomite when he was alive. And to... What, and what are they doing with this kind of stuff? Is to discredit God's word. This is a very important point. And like I said, I just had something this today in the last couple of days listening to several people. It's just astounding how they attack the King James Bible. And, the, and, and with common sense, the the reason that I read the King James Bible is because it's the only one that's under attack. That should be a giveaway. Anyway, that's my comment on... on and i like to read the last paragraph in this page 50. Jerry Farewell, Billy Graham, Francis Schaeffer, and Ronald Reagan are all working to defeat the secular humanist. But none of them even has one word to say about the religious idolatry which curses America, which curses America. Apparently, it is all right for that to flourish. In other words, as long as a person can say he is religious, he is not considered a threat to the freedoms that many Americans still hold dear. Now, isn't that what we're experiencing Six out of nine chief justices are masquerading as Christians. And three mm -hmm. pseudo-Jews. Masquerading. Those three Jews are masquerading as Jews. And those six Catholics are masquerading as Christians. They're vote and their decision last week to legalize sodomy is, is proof in the pudding of who runs this country. The Roman Catholic Church, Mystery Babylon. And I might just add here, the man of sin, the son of perdition, is to visit here, to visit and speak 
to a joint session of Congress in September. Anybody that's been reading their Bible and has read Revelations 13, Revelations 17, it paints a perfect picture who the son of the son of perdition and the man of sin is the antichrist and that all every single every single reformer pinned the tail on the donkey it's it's so this last two weeks to me listeners it's it's so evident what is going on? There shouldn't be any speculation on our part if you've got your head in God's Word. Not in the NIV. Not a perversion. Because the NIV talks about a future Antichrist. The King James Bible talks about a man of sin, singular, the son of perdition. This is this is this this should make the hair stand up on the back of our necks when we realize what's happened this last week in America. That's that's what I want to comment. And that and the, I just what we did we just read uh, uh, and commented on page fifty of the Vatican Jesuit global conspiracy. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty amazing when you think about it, and uh, especially that last uh, paragraph. And you know, I got I got I got uh, a couple seconds here, and then I'll pause real quick, and then we'll uh, continue uh, with Jerry Falwell, Billy Graham, and these types of things. And then with a the little quote that I read with these pastors that are uh, um, <laughs> going so against us, as as you see that being mirrored. You don't see any of these pastors or anything recognize the idolatry going on in this nation or the the imagery and, you know, the idolatry, which is the forefront of this whole problem, which is what brought us to this point of sodomy being legalized. Um, so let me go ahead and pause for uh, about five or six seconds, and uh, we will continue. Okay. Um, you, you, so, you know, uh, uh, Jesse, uh, I was just reading as I finished that last paragraph. I need to read two more paragraphs because it, it's cool. just getting right down to the nitty gritty uh, and, and understand why this is so profound. This man, Ronald Cook, I'm not trying to pound his chest, to pound, you know, to elevate him, but he, he wrote this in 1985. Mm -hmm. And can you imagine what Ronald Cook would think of thinking today of what's transpired here this last week in America and what's going to <laughs> transpire in three months? Let's listen to what he says. We would have to say candidly, the judgment of a God has a far greater chance of falling upon America because of idolatrous false religion than it does because of secular humanism. We oppose the atheistic humanist without reservation, but we do not believe that this is where the heat of the battle rages in America today. We believe that America's love affair with the great whore who sits on the Tiber poses a far greater threat to America's freedoms than any other evil which America faces today. He didn't know that Pope, a Jesuit Pope, was coming to speak to a joint session of Congress when this man read, wrote this. We recognize the power of communism. We recognize the power of Islam. We recognize the power of secular humanism. We also recognize the power of Romanism. And we would have to say that a candid look at America today will show that of the four evils mentioned, we will show of the four evils mentioned, Romanism 
constitutes by far the biggest internal threat to America today than any of the others. Boy, I tell you. (laughs) Could you read anything else that could explain what's going on in 2015 and what's going to transpire here in three months with the Pope coming to sell his climate encyclical to a joint session of Congress, and from there he's going to go over to the United Nations? This this and, here this here to me is like this. What it's doing to me is is I'm getting a reality check. It's reality. No more fantasy. No more fantasy. It's not it's time to quit talking about the Bilderbergers, the Club of Rome, and blaming it on the Jews, and blame it on the Puritans. On and on and on. The children of God need to be able to pin the tail on the donkey and to know their adversary. And that adversary, that I, that superstitious, idolatrous mystery, mystery Babylon, has got is 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 the storefront for the Roman Catholic Church. It doesn't get any plainer than this. And when we see, when we see any man that's coming out of these seminaries and Bible colleges, the ministers that are being put out like a factory, they, these seminaries and, and Bible colleges are, are manufacturing Roman Catholic priests. That's why we are able to see a Jesuit Pope come to speak to our joint session of Congress, because every single one of these ministers that are graduating and coming out and teaching futurism are counter-reformation. This is a profound we're living at a time in a week. I tell you, I was a little tired coming here tonight, thinking of some of this. It, it, you know. But what can you do? It's reality. But you know what it does? Only, only a child of God is going to see this. The Bible in this country, not the government. There was a time early, on the very early part of this country, that they did print the Bible. Yeah, it was printed. It was a cornerstone. Our government never was a Christian government. But the people were, and it's been proven, you can pass all the laws you want. But that doesn't make somebody obey the laws. It, it's because of the seed of the Protestant Reformation and the seed prior to 1776. That's our heritage. That is the seed. And that's what this country, it's got a lot of ills. But this country has helped a lot of people. And it didn't come from Rome. The the American Revolution was counter-reformation. And by 1850, and by 1850, they were the largest denomination. I'm talking about Romanism. And then we had the Civil War, which was counter-Reformation. They had Protestants killing Protestants. And we could have never had it if it wasn't for that superstitious, idolatrous Roman Catholicism. 
I guess what's on my mind tonight, Jesse, is it's kind of a sting to see your country legalize sodomy. There's a lot of people, and and another thing I might add, it ain't the majority. This was pushed on us. This was pushed on us by a by a Roman Catholic Supreme Court that is interpreting the Constitution. They're interpreting Roman canon law, not the Constitution in the Bill of Rights. If something you're hearing here tonight, I realize nobody's talking about what's really happening. No, they're still talking about GMOs. They're still talking about vaccines. And it's important. These are important topics. But it's amazing. I was just out today for a little bit. And I, I, was, talk, I was talking to a fellow. I was helping him on his computer. And, and, you know, you know, he, he didn't know about TPP. <laughs> I said, and he didn't know that we had became a sodomite nation. Not a homosexual. It's not homosexual. It's sodomy. And, oh, boy, let me say this again. God is so clear about what sodomy is. And how he, he, he what he thinks of sodomy. So anyway, I, I appreciate you letting me run a little bit, Jesse. But uh, my heart's bleeding a little bit, but it's in the right place. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll give it back to you. <laughs> I I totally understand, um, and it's uh, you know, and and you know, when Ronald Cook mentioned. Um, the aspect of idolatrous false religion, um, you also got to put in a notion that uh, where does judgment begin? Begins in the house of God, and uh, you know, and that's uh, that's that's a very big time reality gut check there. Um, that it was it, it's uh, it, it's a lot of passive Laodicean, lukewarm. I am I am rich and in need of nothing. Christians that have uh, totally forgotten, um, you know, the historic uh, view of prophecy and, um, you know, and prophetic facts, and that has led this uh, false religion of idolatry to creep in. And uh, at the forefront of that is Romanism. And... um, you know, and all the other ones that just follow suit right along with them. You know, because you know, and and their action, and and, that, and obviously with Romanism at the head, um, and that's the same case that you see with these modern ministers that I just uh, read off. Is they are adamant of you know saying this, that, and that. I'm never going to marry sodomites, you know, in my church and these types of things, but they. You know, they're quick to point the finger, <laughs> but what they're doing is they're failing to turn that finger around and point it at the aspect of what caused this to happen in the first place. Um, and that leads me to Luke 26 through 29, which it says, and as, it, and as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank. They married wives. Now, there's a comma there, so this is a separate aspect here. And they they married wives. They were given in marriage. So they weren't only marrying wives in Noah's day. You had, you know, uh, you had sodomite going on there, you know, because, you know, in Genesis it says men's hearts were evil continually. That's all they did was evil, evil. That's all it was until the day that Noah entered into the ark. And the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, also as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, 
They bought, they sold, they planted, they builded. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. And if you doubt that, all you got to do is look at a couple of documentaries regarding Sodom. And, you know, there's still remnants of the sulfur that rained down in that area. Uh, and, and it has been a testimony for at least, at least, if you know, I'm just going to take a guess at this. At least about four, forty-five hundred years, <laughs> and uh, and so this is a, and and the thing is, is we see the same aspects of fire and brimstone, kind of mentioned in, you know, the plagues of Revelation, the wrath of God. Now in Romans one, it mentioned the wrath of God. Now what is the wrath of God in Revelation? It's not the seals. It's not the trumpets. It's the plagues. So you can kind of get a little clear picture of how close we really are. And there's fire and brimstone mentioned within those plagues. Okay? And these pastors are so adamant about, I am never going to pass this. Well, you know, <laughs> Obama just basically kind of snuck, snuck in there with a little phrase that said, hey, you know, those who have come so far on their journey to equality have a responsibility to reach back and help others join them. So, and there's a lot of things about this aspect of separation of church and state. Oh, we still have separation of church and state. And, you know, this is why I got this 501c3 page up here. Because what 501c3 is, is the obliteration of the separation of church and state. And this was only, what? This was uh, March 7th, 2006 is, was, is when this executive order was signed. So it was only uh, six, nine years ago, and people already forgotten this. <laughs> and, um, and it amazes me. So I'm going to read a little bit from this. Um, and again, this is out of remnantofgod.org. Uh, the, the webmaster of, of, of this site is Nicholas. Um, yeah. And he's got a, I mean, he did a really good job on bringing a lot of points out here. So I'm just going to read this verbatim. And Walt, if you got any comments along the way, um, feel free to chime in. Um, Revelation 13.5, he starts off by reading Revelation 13.5. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak, and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. On March 7th, 2006, the Bush administration put into law a brand new executive order, number 13397, that removes the separation of church and state and forces all churches with 501c3 status to become government agencies. Strangely enough, this came almost exactly one year after Pope John Paul II said the following. From Vatican City, March 17, 2005, this was out of Zenit.org, quote, Church and state can cooperate, says, says the Pope. John Paul II believes that the church and state can and must collaborate in their service to the person and the common good with relations of autonomy and difference, end quote. And uh, this same President George Bush, uh, when asked a question regarding the Pope, what he uh <laughs> What he views the Pope as, um, he just plain out. I mean, he just plain out came out and said, "and says I see God in his eyes." <laughs> you know, and and this happened basically almost one year prior to this executive order being signed on five hundred one c three. And uh, goes on this uh, the, this uh, letter goes on to say, before getting into the current facts. Let's look at the past movements of the beast in Rome to see if there are any parallels. 1,693 years ago, in the infancy of Rome's prophesied power, we find movements of the modern-day Vatican. The modern-day Vatican can't help but to echo today. When you read the following historic facts, try to recall what the American government has been doing, especially since John F. John F. Kennedy's instituted blue laws which in turn forced all government agencies to be closed on Sundays. 313 A.D. 
the so-called Edict of Milan issued jointly with his colleague Licinius, granting religious liberties to all of whatever religious belief, and particularly mentioning the Christians hereafter, Constantine surrounded himself with bishops, gave preference to the Christians, and issued legislation in their favor without renouncing or persecuting paganism. Because after all, this was religious liberty. And it wasn't this exactly that was done here in 1776, this whole aspect of religious liberty, which basically, you know, was the foot in the door <laughs> for the Jesuit order and for Catholicism. Now, I believe I had that right, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> well, and they, in other words, uh, freedom, uh, the freedom, the freedom of religion also... Uh, is a you know breaks the first commandment to have no other gods before you. I mean, in other words, they're they're legalizing. You can bring any god you want into our country, mm -hmm. and, and that's what happened. They did. They brought a superstitious, idolatrous religion that, that you know, and which mm -hmm. which they helped with immigration, and the fact that uh, Rome always is after the civil powers. You know, and and what what's interesting, like this five hundred five hundred one three. You know, people cannot see the connection. They cannot see the connection that it's Rome who is putting the lid on these on these churches. They can only say so much. They can say anything they want to say, except they can't say anything about Rome. You know, it's it's uh, and it's it's amazing how people want to deny it. So, well, I heard a fellow just the other day in this broadcast. He said there was never any you know, separation of church and state. Well, <laughs> absolutely, it was built in. It wasn't written in a such a way. It, it, it didn't specifically uh, say separation of church and state. But it was it was built into the Constitution that, that it was built it was built into the Bill of Rights. Right. In other words, they didn't they didn't want to take orders from a pope or a king, and they didn't want any church to take over the civil power. Why? Because they all, even the people, the the enlightened ones, even they knew. They knew who goes to the top. When you look at the Dark Ages, who do you think controlled the civil power? You know, it, 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 it was the Roman Catholics. It was the Roman Catholics that controlled the civil power. I mean, the, the, the church itself didn't... In the, they, they weren't the ones that were out there dragging people down into the torture, into the dungeons for torture and, and arresting them. No, it was a civil, it was, they did it legally. They had, they, they legislated laws. The same identical thing that's happening today. They're legislating laws that are suppressive. Mm -hmm. Everybody has felt for ever since 9-11. And who wrote who wrote the Patriot Act, but a Jesuit from Georgetown University. That's where it was written. I can't, he's a Vietnamese. I, I don't know, do you know his name? Uh, uh, not. D, D uh, anyway, he, he, he was a constitutional lawyer there at Georgetown University, and uh, the Patriot Act was already uh, written and ready to go into action. And guess where it was written? At Georgetown University. This this is getting to me as I as especially this last week. I mean, you realize and the you know, I I you know, as a child of God, we are appealing to God's children that have an ear to hear and eyes to see. But you see, in this world, when a man does not have when man does not have a relationship with his creator, with Christ, with the Bible, 
evidence doesn't matter. And it, it makes it all the difference in the world when you see the evidence that we're seeing this last couple of weeks and what's happening here in 2015. The only way you can deny what's going on right now is you have to deny evidence. That's the only way. And all our right. evidence, our evidence, our cornerstone of learning is God's word. And it and it and it's not seventy different versions. Right. It's it's not it's not seventy different versions. It's not seventy different different Bibles that are thirty and forty thousand different changes in each one of them. Anybody with two neurons running can realize what they've done. I want to go back to those Bibles just a little bit. You see, it was the New World Translation that broke the ice. Up until the New World Translation, and that was the Jehovah Witnesses, you see, there was only, they were only reading one Bible, the King James Bible. But they broke the ice with the New World Translation. And then the next one that came along that just broke the floodgates was the NIV. And after the NIV knocked down all the the, the floodgates and it was overflowing, the last time I I was I researched this, there was over there was over seventy versions, and I'm sure there's more. I I, I even met a fellow two years ago that that wrote his version. So I know there's probably well over 70 versions, maybe probably 80, 90 versions of the Bible. So again, it's it's real important to to realize that bit of history and to realize because the the people that are that are you know there's nothing there's nothing more dangerous than a little bit of information. You know, it's like. I'll give you an example. I was a pilot. You know, you, you, you don't take a little bit of information and you think you can fly. Mm-hmm. You, you know, I mean, there was a time, there was a time, and there are, I've met men that have taught themselves how to fly. But you, 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 a little bit of information is dangerous. It's just enough to make you real good and dangerous. And that's the same way with these Bible versions. Boy, when you hear somebody beating up the King James Bible, you want to push back and look at what he's saying and really question the motive. Really question the motive. Why would anybody be trying to beat up the King James Bible? It's so evident, if, if, and if you have to, if you have to draw a picture with somebody and describe it, I mean, common sense will tell you. Just a little bit of information will tell you. So again, we're getting, we're getting back on that Bible. Bit. I'm a little bit apprehensive, especially what I've heard the last couple of days. <laughs> It kind of, it, it's amazing, you know, how people can get off and see what, what when people start doing this kind of stuff, what, what is the advantage of attacking the King James Bible? Well, uh, it's real plain. This is a little common sense. What about those 70 different versions? What about the fellow that I met who wrote his own Bible? What's the advantage of it? <laughs> Listen, all they got to do is turn it here, turn it there. It can be 95% right. But it's that 5% that steer you off the target. And that's exactly what they're doing with all these versions. And it's a moneymaker. It's a moneymaker. 
I yes, sit down with people to study, and you have four or five people, and they'll all have a different Bible. Yeah. And I've been actually literally kicked out of a Bible study because I said to the man that was holding the study, he had a, he had a handout, leaflet, and a study, and he had a verse, and he had five different versions of the Bible. And I, I looked at that, and every one's reads a little different. I said to the man, all I said to the man is I said, uh, you know, this is very confusing. And you know, he showed me to the door. Now, I didn't know what I know today. I mean, I was, I was like a deer in the headlights in those days uh, uh, 20 years ago. But I, that's what led me to go to a bookstore and, and ask for Gail Riffinger's New Age Bibles. Two days later. And when I asked for the bi- when I asked for the book, I, I said, "Do you have uh, Gail Rippinger's New Age Bibles?" And the lady said, uh, "Yes, we do, but it's in the back room." Well, I said politely, I said, well, "Why is it in the back room?" Oh, that's way too controversy. Think about it. <laughs> Think about it. It was too controversy. God's Word, the King James Bible, printed in 1611, fueled the Protestant Reformation, and the Puritans used the Geneva, the Geneva, but the difference between the Geneva and the King James Bible is two different kinds of English. It, they're saying the same thing, but there, there's a different. There's two different Englishes there. You know, but here's a Bible that we've had, and you can, and, and it, see, it's only, it, listen, listen, the New World Translation, that came out in probably uh, around 1948. See, it hasn't been that long that we've had this flood of perversion, but it has had its toll. It's definitely had its toll. But so anyway, I didn't mean to get off on that Bible again. But it's a, it's such a it's it's a, it's relevant to the, to today, to, to what we're going through today. Yeah, yeah. You know, we, well, we have just... to stand fast. We have to stand fast. You know, we cannot be going down this rabbit trail and that rabbit trail. We got to. St- you know, draw a course and stay right on the course. So anyway, I'm, I'll give it back to you, there, uh, Jesse. Yeah, it's, uh, this is like uh, one thing that uh, I used to always say is, uh, you know, when the, when it comes to uh, the water that comes out of the serpent's mouth, as mentioned in Revelation, is, is uh, that's uh, I always like to think that that symbolizes poison in the. Uh, poison as in poison doctrine um, because a serpent is poisonous, you know, and and then I always like to revert back to the decon box, you know, when you look at the ingredients in decon, it's a 99.9%, 99.9% natural food for mice, and it's only a 0.1% of poison that... Uh, um, that actually kills those rodents, you know. And you know, when you apply that principle there to the doctrines and the many different translations of uh, scripture, um, you know, it's it's the same it's the same thing. And that's how subtle the serpent is. That's how subtle Satan is. That's how subtle Rome can be. You know, some of the stuff you, you know they just put out plain out, you know, because of their arrogance and stuff like that. But some of the stuff they, you know, they they are very subtle in what they do. All you gotta do is look at the Jesuit order, you know. Uh, as far as part of that oath, you know, they 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 are commanded to, you know, as a Protestant be a Protestant, as a Huguenot be be Huguenot, as as a secular humanist be a secular humanist, as a Jew be a Jew, you know. So, you know, so you know, you can see the earmarks of Satan all over 
uh, the Roman Catholic Church and the Roman institution and the Jesuit order. I mean, you, I mean, you can see it, you know, and <laughs> it's it's and they'll throw truth at you, but they'll also throw that little bit of tiny bit of leaven. And that is what you have to watch for. And it's very easy to fall for the leaven because sometimes the leaven can be oh so comforting, you know. And um, and this is exactly what's going on with this 501c3. And do you think for an inkling that Hagee and all these people that are go are so against this is gonna is gonna want to get rid of their uh, <laughs> their tax free statuses? You know, I mean, they're they're gonna accept it. They 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 will except the uh, orders that uh, they are to follow. And uh, as another uh, couple paragraphs I will read here um, states that, uh, continuing on this 501c3 article, is says, as I have said numerous times before, just because the Pope wants the USA to form an image to itself doesn't mean that will happen. In order for it to come to fruition, you must have a protestant leader Stand up, demand the same thing, using, of course, a grassroots campaign. Well, back in October of 2002, Pat Robertson's Christian Coalition held a rally in D.C., straightforwardly snubbing both the Scripture as well as the American Constitution regarding separation of church and state. Prophecy bluntly states that the lamb-horned beast, which is actually the United States government, will make an image to the beast, Revelation 13.11, before Christ arrives so as to better enforce the beast's mark upon mankind. Let's quickly look at the facts, shall we? Fact. The Vatican State has been both a church and a government since circa 313 A.D. Another fact is, as of March 7, 2006, the USA is now officially a church and state form of government using the 501c3 tax-exempt status. Prophecy has already blessed us with rock-hard evidence as to the true nature of the Vatican and its agenda. All prophecies that speak of the beast or antichrist have been proven fulfilled by the popes of Rome for both scriptural as well as historically documented proof on that period or on that statement. And then he goes on as, as follows by saying, visit my characteristics of antichrist page in the warning section of the website. Now that we know who this beast is, how can any government form an image of it? First off, it would have to obviously become a church and state entity. Still, the main image of this beast is not only about melding church and state. The true agenda behind all this is control, to put it bluntly. Rome has all along gone directly and quiet and quite openly, I might add, against Christ's suggestions regarding separation, separating the church from the state. I have literally hundreds of articles that show Rome's not so hidden agenda regarding forcing the USA government to form an image of their form of government upon the American people and the world at large. That section of the website became so large because, because of all the articles that I literally had to split it into four separate pages. Sometime after starting the research, I decided to stop updating the page because there were far too many articles coming in. It was that obvious. Rome has been t attacking both the Constitution as well as the church and state separation for decades. And now they have what they worked so far for. Now, and he goes on to f as follows um, in, uh, in the next paragraph that Pat Robertson um, has pushed very hard for this removal of church and state. And he also has evidence that Pat Robertson is actually a Catholic Jesuit. Pat Robertson um, actually has called for many so-called assassinations. He has called for assassinations, and he condones assassinations and these types of things. And he know when you follow the chain behind assassinations, you I mean, you know who was at the forefront of that. And uh, <laughs> um, it's just uh, it's just very amazing to see. All of this transpiring, okay, and um, I mean, and just uh, another thing that is be that uh, he has here is free speech will not be allowed in churches. Uh oh, this was from Wednesday, October second, two thousand two. This was only thirteen years ago. Agape Press news briefs. After a tough debate last night in the House chamber, Congress. 
Congressman Walter Jones' House of Worship Political Speech Protection Act was voted down this morning. If it had passed, this bill would have freely allowed political speech inside churches without the fear of the loss of tax-exempt status with the Internal Revenue Service. Okay? So this image of the beast, this separation of church and state is done. It's gone. And, you know, and another thing I want to um, make light, you know, make mention here is the aspect of the Capitol building, <laughs> okay? Capitol, and actually it kind of goes along with Capitoline Hill as one of the seven hills of Rome. The Capitol building, actually, when you look it up on Google Earth, actually mirrors exactly St. Peter's Basilica, and they actually face each other. And so does the obelisk in Rome and the monument. They face each other. In fact, up until... Ronald Reagan, when a president was to give a swearing-in ceremony, um, they always did it um, on the West Front, I believe. But after Ronald Reagan, um, they switched it to where now... No, it was after, just the opposite, uh, Jesse. Okay. The, the, the East Portico is where they did it. Okay. And then they switched they to the West yeah. Front. Okay. And so... Ever since Reagan, now every presidential candidate that gets elected, they give their speech facing the West Front. And when they're facing the West Front, they are actually facing the St. Peter's Basilica and facing that obelisk and facing Rome. Exact pinpoint. When you do the, when you zoom out on Google Earth, you can see it. I mean, it's plain as day. Whereas before Reagan, it was East Portico, East Portico, East Portico. And then after that, it's West Front, West Front, West Front, ever since. Even Obama, even Obama, both times. So, um, you know, so to, and again, to deny that this, that this U.S. government is not the beast out of the earth with two horns like a lamb and speaks out as a dragon you know, is really to deny prophetic truths. I mean, I mean, I, I, I mean, I personally battled with this for a little, for a long time. You know, and um, and with all the evidence, especially with five hundred one c three and these types of things that are just coming in, you know, that has came in. You know, it's 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 amazing. It is quite amazing. And part of the executive order, um, like. For example, Section 1 is to establish of a center for faith-based community initiatives at the Department of Homeland Security. Um, the center shall be supervised by a director appointed by a secretary. The secretary shall consult with the director of the White House office at faith-based and community initiatives. So basically what goes on here is your pastor is no longer a pastor. He is the CEO of an organization. He is the CEO of a corporation. Your deacons are secretaries, and they all report back to this, you know, this uh, faith-based center here with, at the Department of Homeland Security. You know, I mean, as nice and solemn as they may be, you know, <laughs> trust me, your pastors in these churches are not who you think they are. You know, um, and, and you know if. And they have to, I mean, you know, eventually the shoe's going to drop, you know, and I think it's going to start with the, with this whole Supreme Court ruling, you know, because this is a big one. And this is a big one for all of these church buildings out there, you know. And I have a feeling, you know, this this is really going to start to open up, and hopefully this will um Hopefully this will open a lot of eyes, especially within these churches to come out of these churches, you know, and uh, hopefully, again, this will open a lot of eyes when they see the, the landscape of this whole thing. And on top of that, you have September coming up, too, you know, when, you know, the Antichrist is going to, you know, visit here on these shores and speak on behalf of the American people at a joint session of Congress and at the U.N. and a uh, the the family initiative, I forgot what that's called. So he's going to be speaking twice here in America, you know, and at the UN three times, you know, one in, once in Philadelphia, 
once in Congress and at the United Nations. So um, if you got any closing remarks, um, if, if, you know, Jesse, I, I think this is a good time to interject uh, uh, what, how a president, how George W. Bush portrays and sees the Pope as. I think uh, let's 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 listen to this. Just it only, it only takes only 20 seconds. Okay. Mr. President, final question. Yes, sir. You said famously, when you looked into Vladimir Putin's eyes, you saw his soul. Yeah. When you look into Benedict the Sixteenth's eyes, what do you see? God. When you look into Benedict the Sixteenth's eyes, what do you see? God. Good way to end the interview. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. My- well, th- I think that's the best way to try to define what. Uh, what our government thinks this man is. Here's mm-hmm. the president telling us that um, that God's coming to speak to us. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's uh, it's a time for reality. See, people are too busy and and uh, they're not living in reality. See, and they they've lived in so much uh, the magic kingdom and everything that uh, and see see to to live in in fantasy, you you've got to ignore evidence right it's just like uh, playing that little uh tape well it's 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 evident you know what the government thinks of this man the president of the united states says that you know he looks into his eyes and sees god see so it's a it's not us i mean this is reality they're right. playing this little game, this biggest fraud. The, the, the Roman Catholics, uh, the, the, the Pope is probably the biggest show on earth. But it's it's attracting the crowd. Oh yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> I mean, I mean, why, why? Because people are living in fantasy. They they've been to Disneyland one too many times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's. Uh, they take it. They've really taken this. The, they've been to the Magic Kingdom one too many times. And mm-hmm. trust me, this Pope, he's, he's got a kingdom lined up for us. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This, and, and, and this is a good time to interject in this. Can, can you imagine now, we st- just stop and think of this. We're inviting John Boehner said, on behalf of the American people, we're inviting the organization that's responsible for the Inquisition. Stop and think what what I what we just said here. The United yeah. States government is inviting the man of sin, the son of perdition, the, the same organization that was in charge of the Holy Roman Empire and the Inquisition. Yeah, that's why, that's why, you know, it's not, it's, it's, quit, it's time to quit talking about the globalists and the elitists and the, and the, uh, the Club of Rome and the Jews and on and on and on. It's time to, it's time to get off our little horse and, and say, well, no, I'm, I'm tired of Disneyland. I want the real thing now. Right. Oh, it's it's, yeah. it's 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 hard for me. It's hard for me. I mean, I've got to have patience. We got to have patience because the world that we live in right now is that's you know we you know in Second Thessalonians the strong delusion. Mm-hmm. It, it, yeah. It's you, you can't describe the strong delusion. We're under such a strong delusion now that you know that uh, you know. It, it, it then, then all of a sudden, when we talk, all of a sudden we realize, you know, of, you know, the door, the door is being, you know, the ark, the door was shut. Yeah. And you know, yeah. we're, we're in a, we're in a time, we're in a time where that door is getting going to be shut. We're not going to be able to talk like this. They're right. not going to shut up. They're not going to shut up, Alex Jones. You know, you know they're not going to shut up. 
the mass media. The mass media is going to talk this stuff all the time. But it's people. It's 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 all these forbidden books that are out here on the internet that are still accessible, mm-hmm. and the people that are reading them, and the people that are printing some of these books. Okay, you know, you know, but uh, but uh, you know, it's a. Uh, Anyway, it's a reality check, and especially when you're talking about the 501c3, it's so evident what what's going on. Right. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I I can't. I mean, so I I just appeal. I appeal. We are we are on, been on for an hour and a half now. I don't know if you how long else you're going to go. How far you wanted to go? Um, yeah, no, I think this will be a good time to end it. Um, and, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. next, next Sunday, um, if you decide to join again, we'll actually go to, uh, we can cover more of this article of 501c3 and, um, the newsletter, um, cause we just had too much to go over today. I didn't think we were going to get to the newsletter. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, um, we can go ahead and end this broadcast now and we okay. will, uh, have a yeah. part two of this uh, the following Sunday. Yeah. So yeah. All, all you got to do is uh, is stop the recording, and then we can have a little uh, visit here. Okay. All right. So yeah. good night, everybody. Okay. okay. And don't and don't hang up. You know, but uh, but it's uh, very evident uh, who is behind uh, this agenda, and it's not the Jews; it's Rome. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and that uh, you know, because a lot of people will point the finger at the, uh, you know, at the Jews, Judaism, or what have you. You know, Judaism actually follows in lockstep with the Vatican. They actually follow them. They follow their lead. And obviously, this is kind of a key point that Kennedy did do the did make the deciding vote in that, you know, he himself is Roman Catholic. So I think that is, you know, that is actually. His name is Anthony Kennedy. Yeah. Anthony Kennedy, okay. Yes. So um, I want to go ahead, and what I do plan on covering is I got a, uh, I do have a, uh, uh, an article from um, remnantofgod.org, um, which is about the 501c3, because there were some very interesting arguments that came from the uh, pastors and the churches and these types of things. And, you know, and and they're adamant about it. This was out of the World Met Daily that, um, you know, for example, I'm just going to read this this whole thing here, um, part of it, like uh, this paragraph here from World Met Daily. It says, quote, dozens of Christian leaders such as Franklin Graham, James Dobson, and John Hagee had already signed a petition before the ruling assuring the Supreme Court that they would defy any decision that came down redefining the 6,000-year-old de- definition of marriage. A totally unbelievable decision, yet totally believable for our society as we are definitely in the swirly mode headed down the toilet, said Pastor Mark Biltz author of Blood Moons, Decoding the Imminent Heavenly Signs. The Bible says, as it was in the days of Lot, so it will it, so will it be when the Messiah comes. That is the uh, gospel presented as uh, Henry Grant McGinnis presented it when he did his lectures and put them in a book on uh, uh, that's entitled Romanism and the Reformation. And I think that's very important uh, to note because even though we have a lot of, uh, we've had the Supreme Court ruling, that uh, rule in favor of the politically correct term of homosexual marriage, okay? And the ruling was five to four um, via the Supreme Court. And uh, what is very <clears throat> unique about that is out of the five people that did vote yay on this, um, three of them, <laughs> um, and you made mention of this on a, uh, you know, on, on a conversation we had, Walt, that three of them were in fact uh, members of the Judaic religion, so they were so-called Jews, and only two of them that voted, that voted in favor were Catholics. So it's kind of neat how they're kind of spinning that. I, I, I'd like to make a point. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, you know, when you uh, called me the other day, and we uh, 
we realized it passed, and I asked you at, at the vote, and it was 5-4. Mm-hmm. If you remember, we between you and I, we figured out who, who voted for what before I got the vote, before I got who actually voted. Yeah. In other words, when we were talking, I said, it's going to be all three women are going to vote for it. And, uh, uh, and then the Jewish man, that makes four. And we were undecided who, who's going to cast the deciding vote. But it was uh, Kennedy, I forget his first name, uh, and he's a Catholic. So okay. two, it was two Catholics and three Jews that voted for it. So, and as we commented that night, it's always, it, you know, when, somebody, when it gets in some circles now, they can blame it on the Jews, see? Mm-hmm. The throne and he is in control. So, remember that there is only one mediator between God and man, that there is but one sacrifice for sins, offered once for all and forever. Through the one mediator, by the one sacrifice, draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. You need no mediator between yourself and Christ. 1 Timothy 2.5, For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. The priest is a false intruder there. Jesus calls you to come to himself. He is both human and divine. He is bone of your bone and flesh of your flesh, yet without sin. God is in him. He is one of with us and one with God. Suffer nothing to come between your soul and him. Suffer no saint, no angel, no virgin, no priest to come between you and Jesus Christ. Go to him for the pardon of all your sins. Make to him your confessions. He can absolve you and will. Yea, he does. <clears throat> if you truly believe in him, priestly absolution is a lie. It is a blasphemous pretense. The sentence, I absolve thee, whether from the mouth of Romish priests or Protestant ministers, is profane. Be not de- deluded by it. Your fellow sinner cannot absolve you from the sins you have committed against God. Turn from these idols and vanities. Jesus is all you need. His blood is sufficient to atone and cleanses those who simply trust in him from all sin. Search the scriptures. They testify of him. Come to him that you may have life. His heart is touched with the feeling of our infirmities. None can sympathize as he can. None can help as he to you, to each one, he says, Him that cometh unto me, I will in no wise cast out. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. Thou alone art all we need, for thou alone art all in all. John 5.39, search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. The sewer floodgates are opening for all filth to come pouring in, um, and I, I, I mean, I mean, I agree with what he said in that last sentence. I mean, I understand that, but what's really unique is all of these pastors, all of these uh, denominations, all of these churches have signed an agreement with the government uh, for tax exemption status um, under the code 501c3. And long story short, with that 501c3 basically is that they are basically given their um, allegiance to the government, basically stating that the government is their creator, so therefore, so therefore um, <clears throat> anything politically incorrect that comes through these, ter- th- th- these churches, the government has a right to um, say, no, you cannot preach on this, you cannot preach on this, you may preach on this, this, and that, and the other. And it is very unique because with what Obama said in his speech was very crafty. It was a very crafty little speech. I'm just going to read a portion of it. Um, And then you can chime in after this portion of the speech if uh, you you deem fit. Uh, Obama said, quote, opposition in some cases has been based on sincere and deeply held beliefs, he said. All of us who welcome today's news should be mindful of that fact, recognize different viewpoints, revere our deep commitment to religious freedom. But today should also give us hope that on the many issues with which we grapple often painfully, real change is possible. 
He continued, abruptly switching gears, clearly implying that those who disagree must come around to the more righteous, more American, and more equal view of marriage. And this is what he said. This is very tricky the way he put this. Quote, shifts in hearts and minds is possible, he said. And those who have come so far on their journey to equality have a responsibility Recorded live. My name is Jesse Vassell. I'm here with a guest from Grand Design Exposed, Walt Stickle. My YouTube channel is by the same name, Jesse Vassell. Um, and um, I basically titled this impromptu broadcast as the United States of Sodom, uh, 501c3, and... Uh, um, Rome's homosexual agenda. Um, there is a, there is quite a bit of stuff I want to get to. If I can't get through all of the uh, information that I have pro provided here this evening, then we'll have to probably do a part two of this, you know, the following weekend or or what have you. Um, so if you want to um, say anything, Walt, you know, before we officially get started, um, feel free. Oh, no, I'm just uh, I'm ready ready to go and uh, looking forward to the discussion on on tonight's topic. Okay. All right. So before we get into the uh, the recent event that took place on June 26th, 2015, which actually is a very unique date because that was also the same year that the United Nations was found. You know, the same date, June 26th, 1948, and in, in the year 2000, on June 26, the United Religions um, Initiative was founded. Um, but um, as I'm starting to do with all broadcasts, I want to read real quickly the gospel delivered by Henry Gretton Guinness out of his book, Romanism and the Reformation, because I think that is important um, before we discuss any kind of prophetic significances of any current events, because Jesus Christ is at the center and he is on the